Hey folks, and welcome back to Crazy Gamers Models. How we doing today? I was talking with some of my supporters. One in particular, Love Minis. Thank you very much for your input on this. And we were talking about there's not anybody on YouTube that does purely a build with build technique. No painting. I'm not going to do any painting. This is all going to be about assembly. And I'm not going to do any painting. So I'm going to put this tiger together. It's got a full interior, clear parts of the hull and turret. And I'm basically, this kit was donated to me. And they told me I could do this. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build it. I'm not going to put any paint on it. I'm just going to build it straight through the instructions, how the instructions are worded from the beginning. And we're going to see what we get. It's got photo etch, it's got workable tracks, workable torsion bars, and we're going to see what, what what we get from this. And this is going to be a pretty basic um, video. So if you, if you are an experienced modeler and you build hundreds of models and you're an expert painter and all that stuff, then um, I'm sorry, this video is probably not going to help you out. But if you are new to modeling and you've never done a full interior and you want to do a full interior but it seems like a daunting task and then you know especially trying to figure out how to paint it and all that stuff well I, i'm doing a build like that i'm doing a, a yag tiger and i'm doing a panther with full interiors and i'm showing you building it and painting it and things like that but if you just want to see how one of these full interiors go together and how much time and enjoyment you can get out of just building the model itself. That's what this is going to be. Um, I've never built a Tiger, and I've never built a Ryefield model kit. And before I build a Ryefield model kit and paint it and spend all this time detailing it up, I'd like to I'd like to know what, what I'm in for. So I'm going to take this kit, and I am going to build it with no painting on it. I know some people are going to be like, it's a waste, it's, you know, pissing money down the toilet, but I, I, I don't see it that way. I, I do this hobby because it's relaxing, I enjoy it, I mostly enjoy the build process, um, sometimes the paint stresses me out, and I don't need that in my life, so at this time, I'm going to just do a build techniques video and build this, this Tiger one. This Tiger one right here. My Panther build still going on. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to be airbrushing a bunch of stuff. My Yag Tiger, another video is done. That's going to be going up soon. Um, probably the day after this one or before this one. We'll see. Somehow I, don't, I think these are live sometimes and I get confused. So this is the Tiger one Rye Field kit. It's got a workable turret, all that stuff. Um, and... It basically is going to start out with the, the turret. And immediately, you need to read this top section here. The assembly of the instructions is based on the S04 vehicle. The number 1331 vehicle and the clear parts are optional. We use the color of the line to distinguish the type of assembly. The number 1331 is green, and the clear parts is blue. Read the instruct instructions carefully to select the type before assembly. So, let us take a look. I know we're not going to be um, painting it, but let's just take a look at the 131 here. Okay, here's the 131. And this is, okay, so this is a good good comparison here. This is the SO4 and what it looks like. Appears to have a shorter gun. That's what it appears to have. Oh, no, it's got that sticking out. I don't know. It's weird. It would show it like this and zoomed. 
Yeah, apparently the gun has stripes on it. So, I'm not sure what the difference is. But I, I want to build the one, the, the 1331 just, just because um, I'm going to get another kit of this and paint it. And I want to build the SO4 because I like this, um, this camo scheme. I want to build this exact tank later. So, I'm going to build this one unpainted as the 1331-1331. So, now that we decided that, we have to make sure that we do the green. So, we now have picked what tank we're going to do. Um, if you are going to choose to paint it, you know, that's going to be your paint scheme. And that's going to be your build off. So, we've picked that. Now, let's talk about part organization. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to show you my box the kit came in. This is... My kit box and as you can tell they are not in their original bags I'll show you here what I do is I see the sprue which the sprues are nice because the letters are cut out and I put them in these bags that you get um, you get a package of a hundred on Amazon for two three dollars but I don't ever throw them away um, as I use them I put a piece of tape with the letter of the sprue. As I use them, I put them back in the bag they came in, and then they get used on the next kit I do. <coughs> so, in theory, the hundred I have will last me forever. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is G. And it's basically the clear parts. Um, and we'll we'll get into that. I am going to build this. With all the clear parts, but I believe I'm going to leave half the turret unclear. We'll look at that when we, when we talk about build in the um, instructions. But as you can see, I basically, all my sprues are labeled with this. I can grab them quickly. I don't have to look on the sprue. And also, if any pieces fall off, they fall off in the Ziploc bag. And they can stay sealed up in there, and I don't have to worry about it. So... That is, and it still fits in the box. Um, key trick to making it fit in the box, because they're Ziploc bags, is I use a hole punch. I don't know if you can see this. I use a hole punch on the corner of the bag. I just, I basically, I take a hole punch and I stick it on the corner of the bag like this and punch it. It just makes a hole. And then now all the air can be let out of the bags and it's not gonna no parts are gonna fall out of that well with this kit maybe but we're gonna hope not if they do hopefully they stay in the box and then I keep it on a little tray down here below my leg that I can just pull out the spruce like right now I have my tacom panther late right there for easy access now we're gonna talk about cutting parts out so I use a pair of Citadel cutters um, Games Workshop Citadel cutters for cutting sprue gates big pieces of sprue um, anything that's large I use the Citadel cutters and then this was my first pair of Tamiya cutters that I got about three years ago. And these are just their sharp point cutters, not their one, two, three cutters. And I use these to take the pieces off the sprue, um, but leave a little bit of a nub left. So I'll show you that when it's time to cut off parts. And then I, I had recently gotten as a gift a pair of these one, two, three cutters because I was raving about them for about three weeks. And a friend of mine says, if you think they're so good, I'll get you a pair and you can prove it. And I have proven it. These are fantastic snippers. But I just use these to take off the final nub of the part. Or if 
I have no choice but to cut the part close off the sprue that I use those. I use a stencil brush to knock the dust off all my parts before gluing. That's a common thing. Um, I have a I have this um, well used doll um, number 10A scalpel blade. I prefer the 10A scalpel blade over the 11. It's, it's wider and shorter so it doesn't have as much flex so you don't get chatter when scraping. And I use I use this mostly in open boxes and packages, but I, I do use it occasionally for scraping. I have a fresh number 10A blade here that I use for cleaning parts. I also use a number 15 for cleaning parts here. This is a number 15. This is great for cleaning parts. Um, scraping back paint if you need to glue things together and then here I have a 10 a regular 10 that I use for taking out injector pins see there's an injector pin in here like this I can scrape it out like this because the 10a won't get in there this was my photo etch blade but then I found a better photo etch blade now for photo etch, I use a 15, but it's a brand new 15 blade that I just use for photo etch. And for cutting photo etch, I can get this back in there. And then for cutting photo etch, I use this right here. It's, it's marred up because I've been punching out circle discs for my sander. But this is a high density high density polyethylene cutting board um it has some grip texture on it that um, for itty bitty photo etch you can have some issues but for most photo etch it's nice it won't dull your scalpel blade and it is it doesn't flex and it is durable that's pretty nice um, and then i also have a piece of glass that i sometimes use for teeny tiny pieces of photo etch so this is just a the smallest glass cutting board I could find. This is an actual glass cutting board. Because I used a piece of glass recently and I shattered it. So I got a glass cutting board. So yeah. Um photo etch tools, I'll get into photo etch tools when we get to photo etch. Um tweezers, I have an array of tweezers. Um, sanding sticks. My favorite sanding sticks are these Flexifile flex pads. Um, these are my favorite. I know a lot of you guys use the Flory sticks. I can't get those here. I probably could if I tried real hard. Um, I sometimes use the Squadron product sanding sticks um, for chewing down stuff like like. I have a large area I have to sand. I'll use the squadron sticks first. These are kind of nice. These are, they're kind of like um, Q-tips, but they have sanding um, two something on one side and then 180 on the other side. But they feel softer and less less rough than, than other, um, than what they claim to be. So that's good for getting into a round area or a corner or another thing like that. Um, I use these. These use a belt that can come on and off for like getting in there and getting um, injector pins. Um, they come in a pack of four uh, of different fine grits. These are just the two I use mostly. I don't even have the other two out. And then these files are wooded in the middle and flat. These come from the nail store. My wife gets them for me. Um, and then I have paintbrushes and things, but they won't be used on this build. Um, and then glues I use. The Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Set. And drop stuff. I use the regular Tamiya Extra Thin. And then if I have a large surface area to glue, 
I'll use the Mr. Hobby Cement Deluxe. I also find myself on occasion needing to use um, Plastic Magic. Not Plastic Magic. Sprue Goo. I just mixed it in this Plastic Magic bottle. Because the Plastic Magic um, glue is awful. But it does make a good Sprue Goo. So, that's my slightly thicker stuff. And then I have slightly thinner stuff over here in a Tamiya bottle. This is slightly thinner. So, depending on the application that I need it for. So, and then I have my Mr. Surfacers for joint filling and things like that. And then I also have a bottle of Flexifile Plasti Weld um, that I use with this brush for getting deep down inside um, like a fuselage or a hole. Anywhere the Tamiya brush can't get into, I use that with that brush to get in there. So, and then I have a section of files. Sometimes I file stuff down. I'll show you that in the videos. But that's basically, you know, what I'm going to get started with. Oh, yes, and my new, my new Mr. Hobby G Tool Polisher Pro 3. You'll see this in action. This is a little oscillating sander that has different attachment heads for it. This will be definitely featured. And also, um, I can't grab it down at the moment. This is my flex shaft for my Dremel. And the Dremel will be making its feature debut because I have some special burrs that um, you can sand with and things like that. As long as you keep them clean, that will be in there. Oh, also my custom sander with my cheapo Walmart brand electric toothbrush with interchangeable heads. This currently has a polishing pad Velcroed to it. And then you can also have a piece of sandpaper Velcroed to it. And I have different heads and different things that will stick to it. So that will basically cover what um, tools and anything else that I come across tool-wise. I will um, explain it as we need it in different techniques. I'm also going to show different techniques of getting stuff off the sprue. So that's going to do it for this video. It's just be a quick one introducing the kit. Uh, which, what, what we're going to do, we're going to do the 1 3 3 1. So, in the next video, we're going to, I'm going to have all these parts come. I'll show you how to cut all these parts out. And then we're going to start assembling this up. So, we're going to do this step one right here. And then we'll take a look at step two. So, I don't want these to be super long videos because I may film two, three, four in a row and then just release them every couple days. I don't know what the release schedule of this is going to be. I don't want this to take months and months and months. I just want it to be basically all about techniques and assembly. This is basically what I want it to be. So, thank you for watching. And um, if you so choose to, you can join my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. For Crazy Gamer Models, I am the Crazy Gamer. You guys have a fantastic day.